uh, the third uh, Kaka, Kaka morning. And uh, today we have some some special guests and we have a speaker from Institute that have not yet presented. But before uh, we review the review, I would like to remind everybody about... So uh, please turn off your micro. Uh, I think now somebody has the, the microphone on. I can hear a lot of noise. I don't know if it's... Uh, so please, if you are not speaking, please keep the, um, the microphone off. Because we are a lot of people, and if not, it's easy to get in a, in a mess. And also, when you want to ask a question, yeah, so obvious, obviously everybody is encouraged to ask questions, please raise your hand. You know, you can, you can click this option in the Zoom uh, menu or you can use the chat also, okay? And we will, I will try to, to give the space for all the, all the questions. The talks are 10 minutes plus 10 minutes of, of questions. Uh, I'll try to be a little bit flexible with the questions. If we have more discussion, it's, I think it's always nice, uh, but we also have to, to follow the, the timing. And uh, with that, uh, just uh, an overall view of what we are gonna do today. So today we are meeting Again, to hear people from the different CatCat -Cat, uh, institutes, we have uh, speakers from four different institutes of the CatCat, -Cat, but also we have a guest from an external organization, the, the Alba Synchrotron. Uh, actually, this, uh, this was uh, an idea to invite Klaus. Klaus is the scientific director of Alba. You know, Alba is the, the synchrotron uh, facility in, in, in Sardanola, uh, but he will explain uh, actually not only about the synchrotron itself, but also other type of facilities that actually can be very useful and can, can strengthen research that we are doing in, in the, in the CatCat. And then we'll have a talk from three postdocs. So we have Giovanni from EMBL, later Ida from the CRG, and Claudia from the UPF. Uh, I have to say Claudia is actually will give her talk from, uh, from Switzerland, where she's doing her postdoc, uh, but actually will be presenting her PhD work. And finally, we have the first talk from, from ICFO. We have Felix, who is a, a Ramon y Cajal fellow and uh, is doing his research in, in ICFO. So, uh, yeah, so I think this is uh, an overall. And now we can we can give the, the Zoom a screen to, to Klaus. I will stop sharing. All right. I think. Uh, Klaus, Klaus, you are muted. I'm going to mute myself. I think I will uh, not learn it for the next 20 years. <laughs> so thank you very much, Oriol, for the nice introduction. Uh, and I share now my screen. So. so it's really for us a great opportunity to present here our kind of thinking about science in ALBA. Uh, I want also to uh, really stress that this talk is presented by me, but really is the work of a lot of people uh, which are working at ALBA and with ALBA. And I would really point out one person specifically, which is Judith. So she really pushed a lot for getting this view, what you will see in this talk. So let me start with ALBA as a, a synchrotron radiation facility. As you know, ALBA is the only Spanish uh, synchrotron facility, and we are funded 50% by Spain and 50% by uh, Catalan government. We are quite internationally. We have about 27% of staff is international. Uh, we have 35% of our user community is international. And obviously, ALBA is all over the place in Europe with uh, a lot of different collaborations and proposals. A little bit to the history. So we are quite uh, old now. So the project started 2003 uh, and uh, the construction started with 2006. The first uh, beam time uh, was done in 2012. And so we are starting to see the 10 year age. And so last year in December, there was a big decision done which uh, where the government gave us the okay for planning for ALBA 2. And ALBA 2 is now a transition from the third generation to the fourth generation, which means that uh, exactly microscopy 
and the, the microstructures and uh, the looking in the details of more complex materials is in the focus of such a facility. So at the moment, as I said, we operate 10 beam lines. Here a little bit numbers what we are. We have 220 staff. So medium-sized kind of uh, uh, research institute, if you compare it. We have 2,200 user yearly who visit us. So quite a lot. Obviously, the last year was a little bit different. Uh, we uh, publish about 300 papers per year. And uh, we have, <laughs> we have typically something like a 34 percent high impact factor in these publications. So, uh, so, so. I think somebody has the microphone on. Now, <laughs> now, wonderful. So, if you now uh, turn this whole thing really in services and in science. You will see that we have, in principle, two kind of strategies. One is to serve anybody uh, from the Spanish community. If you have any kind of problem, you come to us, and we will find a solution for you. The second thing is we have three, what I would call, branding areas. And in these branding areas, we want to have full system solutions for characterization, so that when you come in with a problem, that we can really give you a solution to it. And so the three areas are health, energy, and sustainability, a uh, sustainable information technology. And obviously, you guys are following under the health category. So I'm focusing now from now on, on this health part. Um, here is the, the kind of uh, thing what I said before, a little bit more in detail. So if we are a normal, if you are a normal user, you will come to us and you can expect that you get the best. Uh, state-of-the-art x-ray characterization uh, facility and you get a hand in getting your data uh, otherwise you're pretty much on your own um, if you don't find the right instrument we will use our network and connect you in europe with anybody who would have sent the best instrument for that what you want to do as uh, the second category what i said already in health so here we want really to develop the right uh, tools and the right instrumentation to serve the community. And we think that this is mainly in instrumentation, in methodologies, which turns out is more and more important if you go in multimodal uh, experiments. And then obviously at the end, also data analysis and strategies. Uh, in addition, what we are trying to do is these tools to get to a much broader community to people who are not yet using the facility. And I hope that some of you guys would exactly fall under this category. So to do that, we have three pillars. On one hand, it's the normal user program, as you may have already experienced. And then we have a training and outreach program, which is quite significant. So we are going to people and really train people. And then the last part is the in-house program, in-house research program. So this part is obviously helping to develop and prototyping all these parts, what we have here. And you make uh, pilots with some uh, collaborators, and then you are trying to introduce a new service. Here now, uh, what we have at the moment. On synchrotrons, traditionally, life science is pivoting around uh, MX. MX and the structural uh, molecular biology is really uh, the kind of a, a, a condensator for life science on synchrotrons, and also with us. So that's the key instrument at the moment, what uh, everything gets started to grow around. We have SACs for uh, the particle size distribution and the shape distribution. We have uh, another beamline, what we are building, Shira. Uh, this is a micro-focused beamline. So this is focused on, on materials which are crystallizing relatively poorly, like membrane uh, proteins and things like that. And then the newest things uh, will be installed in December. It's a cryo-EM. And from there on, uh, this will be a very strong lag in ALBA. And we will build that out uh, much larger. And then obviously, we have 
the bio lab. In addition, now if you go from the structural uh, from the uh, structural uh, molecular biology to the cellular biology, we have a, a set of imaging tools and uh, um, microscopes. So we start here with the infrared microscope. Uh, this is uh, typically used, and the trick here is that um, at the moment it's yeah. fixated uh, samples, yeah. cells, but in, uh, in future we will also offer here um, uh, uh, flow cells with uh, microfluidics uh, and send the cells directly living in this kind of fluids. Um, the second uh, tool is Mistral. This is a full field microscope. It's about 50 nanometers. So you see really the morphology of the whole cell. However, here you have to fixate uh, this, uh, this cell already in a cryogenic condition. And then we have here Faxter, a new beam line, which is uh, on the way. And that is... Uh, um, tomography beamline, which has a uh, field of view of a few centimeters and can have down to something like a uh, sub micrometer resolution. So here you can start now to see where you go from a very small part, which is the molecular structure up to the tissue and perhaps even to an organ level. So and that is exactly what we think, what we want to be known for. So we want to try in the health sector exactly this multi-length scale approach. And we want to do that in a way that we can at the end really understand the behavior. So the areas where we think at the moment we should uh, focus on is drug development, membrane proteins, and structure-based enzymology. Um, I spoke already about the techniques. We will get uh, more focused, most likely on biosacs, but most likely there will be also something like a nanoprobe for, for um, a scanning nanoprobe for uh, the cell level and for the uh, system level. And um, one thing what we would need to do, obviously, and we, are, we have already started with that, is tailoring now the services what we get, not only the beam time, but really the whole pipelines, everything what you need to understand it, really for this kind of community. So now let's go from Shalok as we have historically done it and see the perspective. So you have Shalok, which is uh, pushing in high throughput. So here you will get then more the industrial component Shaira will go more in the more difficult uh, uh, um, molecules to crystallize. So here you get structure information. Cryo-EM helps obviously to do this structure information. Uh, and I explain a little bit more how that works really. And then uh, Biosax is in principle a cornerstone where you see the envelope of the molecule. So, if I have here already the structure, I can see confirmation changes, for example, which goes also here in Shaira in the application where you can already see now that in future there is much more dynamics and understanding how the individual molecule would work within the real system. So um, now this, uh, back a little bit more focused on the idea about what kind of application you're doing. So if you're doing more ligand screening, so uh, development, uh, for example, of medication or something like that, your main partner will be Shalok. Uh, but we, you may also do something on Jira if you have more the membrane proteins, if you're more interested on the system level, I think you will uh, have more uh, work with Shira. I am uh, electron microscopy will bridge both of them. So now let's go from the perspective of cryo EM. So the first thing what you have is obviously you can uh, measure the envelope of the molecule and with that you can do the phasing for doing the crystal structure. On the other hand 
you can, if you have the crystal structure and you want to see how the crystal structure forms the complex, you can also use the cryo. Now, the next thing is biosox. So with that, whatever you get out in this kind of process, you have a really good idea about how this thing really is in reality. So you have a, a, a check of your models, but on the other hand, you can also uh, do all the timing uh, and the dynamics of the molecules in these complexes. Then the computational modeling, which gives you all the information what you cannot get out, out of the rest and binds everything together. And then obviously the bio lab with preparation and the normal other imaging uh, ways. Um, now to the cell level, what you guys are doing, uh, cryo-EM is really uh, essential because with the tomography, you can now use all these levels where you have looked into the molecular stuff and you can transport it on the organelle level and on the system level. And at the end also on the cellular level. So another kind of short note on the computational side. So here you see a typical uh, point what we want to address in the very early, early stage. So you have the cryo-EM data set, you have the MX data set, and you have the bio uh, data set. So out of that, you get the kind of structure. Now you plug in the uh, computational side and you go up to something like a, 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 a cell um, organelle level or a membrane level. And now you can compare that with the X-ray imaging uh, part, and you can really identify the individual parts of this uh, molecular structure in your, uh, in your image. Now on our uh, um, services in the bio lab, we have identified five different threads. And most likely we will focus on this two here at the beginning. Um, now, if you wrap now all that up, so we, we are quite strong here on, the, on this part. We are very strong in this area here. And what we are bridging is really now to the full tissue on one hand. And you see that there is here a gap between these two blocks. And we are really working hard to bridge this gap. On one hand, we think this is computa computational biology. On the other hand, also the cryo-EM will help dramatically to bridge it. From the X-ray part, a scanning microscope will do the same thing. And this is most likely what we are also doing. Now, a little bit science, because we have now done a lot of policy. So here is the example of uh, uh, microplasma uh, genitalium disease. So here you have the electron microscopy picture of the uh, cells, the infected cells. Now you can really drill down uh, to a level where you can identify the individual complexes. And these complexes show up here then you can study, you can purify them, and then you can uh, do the, the structure itself. You see, this is a relative uh, new publication from 18. And now you can go around in the different complexes and you can uh, study uh, the different kind of uh, binding mechanisms in detail. And finally, you uh, combine that also with uh, cryo-EM tomography and you really understand now how the binding mechanism within this kind of complex are working together to make the infection. So um, our in-house research program was a lot related with these pictures, what I just told you, uh, showed you. And what we are doing now is to go to the cell level. And you see here, this is the first kind of a uh, situation where you at Mistral, which is a full field microscope, you really image the cells. Here's the outside part. Now you do the confocal microscopy with our partner at UAB. 
And then finally, you drill really down, you take the infected human cell, and you start to identify really the morphological changes in the cell itself during the uh, mechanism of this um, infection. So let me tell you now, okay, this is wonderful, but obviously the scope is very large. And one of the ways how you can address that is obviously with partners. And so over the uh, time now with the discussion of uh, ALBA 2, we have also started to develop partnerships with strategic partnerships with uh, our colleagues. And perhaps the largest, which is in a pre-proposal state, so very early, is ASTIP. And ASTIP is an idea that you have here the synchrotron, which is the area what it's now. And then there is here an area. And in this area, you can build three additional institutes. Um, and these institutes will be served by three beamlines, at least. Obviously, also the other beamlines are available. But these beamlines are directly integrated into the uh, institutes. So the idea of this proposal is that there is AMBIC for life science, COMTEC for material science, and I think something which is really an interesting concept, Syndustry, which is directly made for innovation uh, hub uh, for the industry. And now in the AMBIC area, so for life science, you will have five different pillars in this institute if it's funded. Uh, on one hand, it's mo molecular structure and dynamics. There is system and cell imaging, cellular biology, and computational biology, and then a kind of a transversal area where you have all the sample preparation and support facilities. So I think this is a really interesting kind of way how you can push much further out and you can be of service to a much larger community. And as I said, we do what you guys need. So there is really a potential. So I really hope that you get involved in that. If you're more on a postdoc level or, or early career, I think you may also think about that you may do a spin-off. So in that respect, this may be also a very interesting aspect. Um, the industrial part of that, one aspect is really focusing exactly on the spin-offs and obviously supporting the local structure, um, but also SMEs and obviously also the big one, but getting parts or the whole circle now available to you as an industrial partner that would be the goal of this exercise. And now let me f wrap up and finish. So what you should have now learned is on one hand, uh, ALBA has two ways how you, can, uh, be, how you can use it. One thing is a normal user. In that case, you take any of the kind of tools what we have and you get beam time and you simply do your research. Uh, the other one is to uh, be in one of these focus areas. And in that case, we try to do everything to give you a full service. And in this case, uh, the service is really based on the characterization tool, on the lab infrastructure, and it's a computational biology part. The red parts, what you see here, is something what we try to do our best effort uh, to support you. But obviously, there are limited uh, resources. But we try to build out these services together with partners. And the blue part is really the core expertise from ALBA. And in that, we try to do all the best what we can really to get the best instrumentation what uh, you want. For the uh, whole research area, you can say that on one hand, 
our strategy is based on imaging tools, which will be much stronger built out over the next five, 10 years. Second part is high throughput applications so that you know what you have imaged is at the end all the materials what are making really the function. And the third part is the data handling facilities um, are really consistent with big data. So data mining should be a part, an integral part of our strategy. And the development of imp and implementation of the new methodologies, this is one of our kind of things what we really believe in will be the future of Alba, but also the future of our user community. And then Alba will uh, form strategic partnerships. I said that already. This is really a key point because otherwise we cannot really provide the services what we need uh, to address this kind of really very applied and very difficult uh, problems what we face nowadays and still have this kind of depth of uh, in, insights in the materials. Okay, with that, I would like to, to close. And uh, if you have any questions, please. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Klaus.